Welcome back to Coding Shorts. My name is Sean Wildermuth. In most of these episodes, I have dug into some programming technology to help other programmers do the things they'd like to do. And hopefully after whatever it is, 117 episodes, that a lot of you have really enjoyed these. No, this isn't me saying they're not going to go on, but I'm going to take a little bit of a left turn on this particular episode and talk about a tool I really like called Obsidian. Now, Obsidian isn't a database manager, isn't a IDE, it isn't some code. It is a tool for taking notes. How boring could that be? But after going through all of the different tools out there, getting sort of stuck in some of them, I finally settled on a tool that I like, that's open source, that's not under some control of a company, and that doesn't have a monthly subscription. All that seems really fascinating. But if you're a developer like me, I think this tool can really help us take better notes and own our own content. Just so you know, this isn't sponsored. It's just, I like this tool a lot. And on Blue Sky, I mention it every time anyone wants to leave OneNote or one of the other note-taking apps to find something that's more friendly to developers as well as normal people. Let's get started. So if you open up a browser to obsidian.md, that might be a clue of what I'm talking about, you're gonna see this tool works for Windows, works for Mac, works on Linux, completely cross-platform, including on phones. And you can go ahead and download it. Again, there's no real cost for it right now. There is a cost for if you wanna use those servers, do some syncing, but the app itself is open source and free. So you can see here, it says it's free without limits, and it does have a small, it does have a small add-on service for either four or $8 a month, or the just want to sync across devices and I'll talk to you about a different way of doing that or if you want to be able to publish notes to some web store. Neither of those I'm interested in so it's perfect for me. And here we are in what Obsidian calls a vault. Now what is a vault? I've got a couple of vaults here and they're basically saying I want to have an area that I can take my own notes in and everything comes along with this including the theme. I'm using a non-standard theme here. Extensions, all of that come with the vault. They don't go with the program, they go with the vault, though copying them from one to the other is pretty easy. So let's talk about how it works. This works just like most other note-taking apps. I can just start typing away as a note-taking app that I like typing on. And you notice there's not a formatting bar, and that's sort of on purpose, though it does, like a lot of editors, have a control P to open up a command, and we could certainly say, go ahead and get that and we can say bold. So let's look at how this works and then we'll dig into what it looks like under the covers in a minute. So let's say I want to, I'd like to create a list of my favorite languages. Now, if I use double quotes around this, it'll show it as a hyperlink. When I was in here, it just showed the double brackets. What does that actually mean? If I click on this, it'll actually create a document for me so that as I'm creating these things, I'm not creating a file and then linking it over and it'll remember where it is so it'll be in our favorite projects. And so now when we go there, we go to the favorite languages, we go back, we're back in this project. And so links between different notes are just using these bracketed with the name of the object. That's all it's doing. In the same way, if I said, let's list them, so just like you might expect, dash, just like markup normally is, is just going to create a bulleted list. And I'm going to say C sharp. And I can still do things like, and you'll notice something. Because it's an external link, it's going to show you this little box to indicate it is an external link that we're going to use. It isn't really one of my favorite languages, but you get the idea, right? Because we have the HTTP in there, it knows it's an external. Otherwise, it thinks there's going to be a file called java.org. So, and of course you could just do microsoft.com, nothing happens, but as soon as we put in the link, then it creates this as a link, so it's auto-linking there for us. That's great. But because this is just what it seems to be, we can also use all the different pieces of Markdown that you might be used to. And so if I wanna just make these checkboxes, surprise, surprise, I'm gonna use the same trick that we have in Markdown. And it will retain these as we check some and don't check some, because what is checking or not checking actually mean? This is putting an X inside the brackets. It's smart enough to know you want to use Markdown and to do all the things you're used to. 
And this includes everything that's supported by Markdown. And there's even some extensions that would support other Markdown-like pieces. So let's talk about code for a minute. So obviously if I do x equals zero, x plus plus, that's just gonna see that as text. If I tab into it, it's gonna expect that these are code suddenly. But what we really want to do in most cases is use the triple backticks. And so now it looks like code, but also if we go ahead and say C sharp, Java, JSON, whatever it is, it has the formatters directly built in for code. So when you're documenting things or writing things out, it tells you that it's C sharp, clicking on that copies it, the whole ball of wax. So let's look at manage vaults. And I'm going to go to our demo vault. And I'm just going to reveal this vault in System Explorer. And this is going to open up my project. And what do we see in here? We see a special Obsidian folder in my journal. We just have a Markdown file. In fact, I'm using Markdown Monster as an editor. And so you can see how this is actually working. But of course, this link over here is specific to Obsidian, this internal links. So you're not going to really get the benefit if you're using internal links. But everything else is just going to work. In fact, uh, let me edit this here. Because it's just reading the file, it's just going to edit it there. It doesn't keep these Markdown files as precious in any way. And what's interesting is if we go to any website, let's just grab one of these Surface laptops, and we're going to bring it into my Obsidian and drop it here. Obviously, I could add the file as well. You'll see a couple of things happened. One is it dropped it in where we wanted, but it also brought in the actual file. And so if we created a folder for things like images, go ahead and put it in the images folder, it's going to know that we moved this. So this link now is going to be to the image that is in our images folder. It's not creating a new one. It's not losing them. And the file system, it's just mirroring the same thing. And so whatever kinds of things you need here are pretty easy to accomplish. In fact, there's a couple of different kinds of notes that aren't strictly marked down, but they're still very interesting. First is a graph view of all your files together. Now, once you get a lot of files, this becomes not as useful. But more importantly is this canvas view. This canvas view is just allowing you to throw down anything on a canvas. And let's say my main file. If we drag this over here, it'll add a file here, another file. And I can even link this to a note from the vault and it'll ask me which note. So let's go ahead and say just my sum notes here. And so we can really create these larger than life canvases for us to do our thinking. Now, is this exactly a mind map? Not really, but it can get you pretty far as a canvas if you want. You'll notice that it'll mark it as canvas just so you can know it's not a regular markdown file. And I'm gonna go ahead and move it. Notice the links stay the same. So one of the tricks I'd like is actually to store all my notes here directly in Dropbox. And in that way, I can actually open the same files on my phone, edit them there. And depending on whether you have Dropbox for Windows or for Android, you may or may not need to actually have something else to sync it. Actually using something called DropSync that will sync Dropbox folder into my local file system on my phone so that every time I make a change, I'm seeing them in both places. And that to me is crucial. If you're not using it on a phone and you have three computers all with it, as long as you're using something like Dropbox or or OneDrive or Google Drive, it'll just work because it's gonna treat them and see them as just files. So this would be great if that's all it did. Let me show you a few more things and then we'll look at some things. What you'll actually see here is there's a pretty good search. If I search for languages, you'll see that it immediately looks through all my files. This is almost instantaneous, even in the case of much larger vaults. My vault is a lot larger than this and I get search in almost an instant. It's really easy to search. And you can, of course, have bookmarks when you get a large vault. You might have a few that you need to go over again and again. One of the features that is built in is this idea of daily notes. So it will start a new file that you can put in your daily notes. And every day you click that, it'll either open the existing one or it will open a new one with a new date. And this way you can, for very quick sort of edits, you can do this in a pretty simple way. But what I really like is using it with a couple of extensions. So inside of Obsidian, there's these community plugins. There's a daily note pinner. And all that does is every time you look at today's note, it'll pin it so that it stays there all day. And the other is something called rollover daily to do. So let's turn that on real quick. 
I'm going to get rid of today's note and look at a note I had from before. I have a couple of different tasks that I put in. And again, this is just using the markdown checkboxes. And let's say that one is complete, but I still have two or three. What rollover does now that we've enabled it, when I click on today's, it shows three to do's rolled over. So these are the ones that weren't checked. They stay on that day after day after day. And this becomes crucial to my to do list. I have a to do list, check off a few things every day. And then when I come back in for the next day, unsurprisingly, Surprisingly, I can see what else is in there. This isn't perfect. As long as you don't get too many hierarchies in there, it'll pretty much work flawlessly. If you start to have a lot of nested to-dos and checkboxes, it gets a little confused. You can actually see if we look at the community plugins that there are a lot that do all sorts of different things. So for example, mermaid tools and mermaid themes, this will support doing mermaid charts directly inside of Obsidian. I don't have that turned on, but what I do have turned on though is if we come down here, in case you didn't know it, you can use Markdown to create tables. Really cool add-in that I suggest most people use if you ever use tables is this advanced table plugin. And you can see it's going to give you all the sorts of table-ish sort of things here that you're used to. So I'm going to start by creating a table. And you can see it just has a couple of headers and a couple of footers. And I'll go uh, number description. And this is going to work sort of the way you would expect it to in Word. This is a description. So you can see it makes it bigger. And if I tab through that, it'll let me put a second description. But because we have these tools, we're not adding the raw markdown that would be implied in here. So let's say we have our little group here. We want to create a new column or delete a new column. I'm going to create it on the left. Of course, because I'm using the advanced, I can go ahead and move it around and put a priority. Go ahead and fill these in. I can even do things like sort and even do things like alignment. So if I want to go ahead and make it all of the stuff centered, I can do that. And you can even, this is one of the more interesting things, is you can actually go ahead and pivot this if you put it in the right direction. So it gives you a lot of tools for creating tables, which end up being a decent amount of any programming documentation I create. I can really just do that pretty simply in here. Usually the notes are for myself, but I can see this as a decent markdown editor, though you might want to use something like markdown master instead for anything really complicated. So Obsidian for me is a pretty easy sell because I can use it wherever I need to be using it. I can take notes on my phone and they magically appear on my laptop or my desktop. And it works in the kind of text that I'm used to writing, which is Markdown. I've been looking for a way to descriptively do things, maybe closer to WordStar, if any of you know that, than having something with rich formatting. I've been using Confluence a lot lately. And while it does take a lot of things from Markdown, it doesn't really store them as Markdown. And so it can be a little iffy once you've created an object or whatever. I really like this. Probably not a solution for a whole documentation system, but for a personal tool tool to keep your notes, to keep ideas you have, any of that, especially to-dos, I really recommend you take a look at Obsidian. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.